All right, time to welcome my guy Tim Doyle and all oh, he already has the ham route. You know what time it is here at HQTD. Let's start there in the East, though. The Bucks and Sixers top four. When you look at those four teams, best bet to come out of that conference for you. It's probably the Bucks, just because they've dominated the 76ers. They've won nine of the last 12, but that was a playoff-like atmosphere yesterday. And I'm not ready to jump ship. I'm still going to say this is the 76ers year. And I think a game like last night, B, is a learning curve game. Joel Embiid had a chance to tie the game. He had a chance to win the game. Came up short. I was in Cleveland at the All-Star game. They went through Joel Embiid. He came up short. He's learning to fly. And you could see James Harden, highest scoring game as a sixer last night. And when they have started the starting five of Harden, Maxey, Thibel, Harrison, and Joel Embiid, they have the number one offensive rated team in the entire NBA during that stretch. So you know how it is. The Sixers are still learning how to dance with one another on the floor. I like to dance, as you know, face to face. My wife, she likes to back it up. So we're still learning 10 years into our marriage when we go to a wedding, who's going to do what? Uh, I think it's now or never for the 76ers. I can't say I have a ton of faith. I have them at seven and a half to one. But if they don't want it this year, B, I don't know if they're ever going to win it. Well, uh, Tim, that's what happens when you listen to Juvenile. We're not going to get into that song. I know what you're hitting at there. By the way, uh, the Nets still the favorite to come out of the Eastern Conference. But let's stay with the second favorites here with the Greek Freak, of course, putting up 40 points. He's the third favorite maybe when it comes to that MVP. He already has one, but should he be the favorite right now? Should he be the favorite right now? No. Okay. Is he the best player in the NBA? Yes. Yes, yes, because basketball is a two-way sport. The best offensive player in the NBA is Kevin Durant. And then after that, it's probably Embiid and then Joker, just from a pure offensive standpoint. But what this guy does defensively, like you're watching the game last night, you got a seven-footer shooting a one-foot shot, and how does Giannis come out here and make this play? Like, he struggled at the free throw line during the playoffs. He's fixed his free throw form. No more 17 dribble. He's taken one dribble. He made a key free throw, missed a key free throw down the stretch. But he's the best two-way player in the league. I think it's almost the LeBron factor with him, Brandon, where it's like, oh, yeah, there's Giannis again. Just another 40-point night and a key block to win the game in Philadelphia. Like, we've become spoiled by this. Now, the odds are starting to go Joker's way, and I think at the end of the day, he's going to hoist the trophy just because you look at the cast of characters he's playing with. I wouldn't say he's got necessarily a team that's loaded. And the fact that they're in the hunt in the Western Conference is just a testament to his greatness. But the best player in the NBA, the best player of all these guys on the board, and we all know how much I love John Morant, best player in the NBA is Giannis. And I think on a night like last night, he proves that he's the best two-way player in the NBA. Is he going to end up winning the award? I think they're going to have to finish first in the East. So if you think they are going to finish first in the East, Lock in now because I think those odds are massively going to drop from 10 to 1, more like 4 or 5 to 1. All right, usually in a year you could plug in LeBron James when it comes to MVP. His Lakers, uh, not so much. They fell to 11th in the Western Conference. LBJ, of course, on the show for quite some time. No Anthony Davis, don't know when he's coming back. Plus, when you look at the regular season as they close it out, they got games against the Nuggets, Suns, Warriors. I mean, Tim, are we thinking bye-bye to a postseason bid here? I know how old you are, okay? And I'll see if you get this reference because we used to play Mortal Kombat back in the day. And they used to say, finish him. And this season is finish him. If over, the season is over. There's no way they make the playoffs. Did you watch them last night? They gave up 81 points in the first half to the Mavericks. I mean, what the heck? I mean, they're not guarding anybody. Oh, by the way, going through their schedule, um, there's an easy game there. I'm trying to figure it out. Uh, I guess the Thunder would be the easy one, uh, who's actually had their number this year. It's over for the Lakers. Once I heard LeBron thinking about, or anybody in the Lakers organization thinking about shutting it down for the year, oh, once that seeps into a locker room, mentally your team is done. You see, since the All-Star break, awful. Opponents are doing whatever they want. You know, last night was another example. That's six straight games they've given up 115 points or more, and in five out of six, those opponents have shot 50%. You know why the Lakers aren't very good? They're old. They're really I mean, I guarded Carmelo Anthony at Syracuse. Now I get, like, tired mowing my lawn. Like, that's a bad sign. You know, when you bring in DJ Augustine as, like, a free agent coop, 
some of these guys got like the life alert necklace on. Like they're just old. Like they've fallen and they can't get up and play any defense. So I'm sorry. I love when the Lakers are good. I'm a huge LeBron James fan. But this year, there is no way they make the playoffs. Oh, uh, yeah, we saw all that, of course, going down in Dallas. I mean, while Luka and the Mavs, they're looking pretty good, especially this year, a team that was 17 and 18 January 1st. But now they're knocking on the door. They're fourth in the West, 46 and 28, and a chance to get in third. I mean, what do we think about Dallas this year? You know, I think they've really improved defensively. I think that they locked in defensively. That was always kind of a bugaboo. They were like the old Hornets, how Charlotte plays now, where – you score 116, we'll score 117. But they're really defending at a high level. And when you talk about Luka getting in shape, I got some advice. Don't come into the season out of shape. Like, come into the season in shape. But what he does, this is another guy who does so much more with less of a roster. You know, they got rid of Porzingis. They brought in Dinwiddie. Like, they've moved some things around, and it has worked out. I think everyone understands their role, and it's playing through this guy. What a sensational talent. I think if you went up and down their roster, you'd be like, wait, this team is a threat in the Western Conference? I don't think they're a real championship contender. I know that right now they're 14-1, to 1, but I think the Suns are, are much better and balanced. I think the Grizzlies are even more balanced. I mean, it's wild to think that Memphis Grizzlies, without John Morant this year, 18-2. and 2. So when they have John Morant, yeah, I think they're a little bit better. I'm not really sure if the record indicates that. Mavericks are going to be a tough out. I think they win a series in um, the NBA playoffs. Maybe they win two. But I think Luka learned next year I'm going to make him the favorite to win the MVP. If he comes to camp in shape, there's not too many other players better than him in the NBA. I mean, he's on the James Harden diet. We know how that pans out. We wait till this point <laughs> of the year to get better, and then we'll see what happens in the postseason. All right, Tim Doyle, don't you go anywhere. We got more with you on college hoops. But let's take a look at the slate tonight when it comes to those games, the Heat and Celtics. At 7, actually the Mavericks and the Cavs, that one at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Get a chance to see Luka if they can extend that lead and maybe get into the top three in the West. Heat and Celtics at 7.30, Grizz and John Morant, maybe on the bench there against San Antonio, who might be trending towards the postseason. Surprisingly, Pop has something working here. Then the Suns taking on the Warriors and Pelis in Portland against the Trailblazers at 10 p.m. Eastern. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.